So, mm -hmm. I get a lot of shit for not watching modern anime. I'm an old fag who watches their old fag animes and goes back and rewatches old fag animes. I get this shit on the internet. I get this shit at work. I get this shit from you. Like, there are newer... I feel like you've bitched at me a few times for not watching certain new anime where I'm like, ah, oh, we gotta do it eventually. Like, I mean, to be fair, I really should watch Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. True. That one I really do acknowledge. But yeah, just, like, all the time. Have you watched whatever the new hotness is? Right. No. Uh, it hasn't proven itself worthy to me for, it, for me to acknowledge it yet. Because, <laughs> I mean, a lot of what I end up watching is shit that is... Which stood the test of time. People are still fucking talking about it. Really need to watch Legend of the Galactic Heroes at some point, because I really feel I owe that to myself. Hmm. But no, I'm watching Goblin Slayer. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I, I can hear hundreds and thousands of My Hero Academia fans all crying out at once. But they weren't silenced. They just kept no, going. There will be no silence. Nevermore. Unfortunately, we don't have them all in one little place to blow them all up. But yeah, so and for what? Because I, I even said I'm like, what are like? I did this on Twitter. I'm like, what are some of the you know like the new shows that are going on this season that are worth watching? Give me some recommendations. And. Some people threw out My Hero Academia, and I'm like, yeah, no, something that started this season, people. Like, what is the new hotness that started this season? Not, like, a current going-on season. And then, like, JoJo Part 5 started. I'm like, bitch, I just finished JoJo Part 1. I'll get there eventually. If I, that, if I end up liking JoJo Part 2. Um, so, yeah. Uh... One of the recommendations was Goblin Slayer. I've heard a lot about the Goblin Slayer, and... I watched the Goblin Slayer, and I feel like people are only talking about Goblin Slayer because it is edgy and stupid and actually garbage, and people are watching it ironically. No. See, as, as someone who hasn't been keeping up with terrible fantasy anime for the last couple of years, let me, let me tell you, no. They are entire, for the most part, entirely serious about how badass and great this show is. Oh. They never, they never watched Old Berserk, did they? No, they just watched Sword Art, and uh, here we are. Yeah, no, because this feels like someone who had seen, like, Sword Art. Like, oh my god, I love how, just, and when I say love, I, I'm saying that facetiously, but, uh. Just how just generic of a fantasy world this is. Right out of the gate. Like, this is someone's... This feels like more of an RPG <laughs> campaign than Record of Lotus War, which actually was some jackass's fucking campaign. I just, I just want to put this into context for you people. Xeon, like I said, hasn't watched fucking most anime that's come out in the last, what, ten years? I've watched select ones from the last 10 years, yeah. So, so I sit down to watch Goblin Slayer with him, and I don't even think about the fact that he is not ready for the deep end of generic fantasy anime. Because, like, the last time I watched anything that was this generic fantasy was, uh, uh, the, the one about hitting on girls in a dungeon. Uh-huh. And that one, but that one was kind of, like... Trying to be self-aware and like, look, we actually have full-on like, like, like levels and fucking RPG mechanics in our fucking world. Yeah, that that's not being like uh, ironic or like quirky and just started being lazy. So yeah, every time a new character or a new thing comes up, I have to listen to him not be, having been numbed by the last five years of bullshit. Like, oh. what the fuck is this? I'm like, what do you mean? What is it? It's just. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, no, this is... This is boilerplate garbage. And the fact that this is now the standard... Well, it's... I, I think it's gotten really popular for two reasons. Mm -hmm. One, edgelords will never go away. Mm -hmm. uh, two, because it does have an interesting thing. All of these shows have one gimmick that they try to sell for the season. 
And and this show's gimmick is the half plate guts. Well, guts is half plate guts for a couple of arcs, but um, is yeah the the, the honestly rather interestingly uh, built character of the Goblin Slayer. Yeah, no, don't don't make that fucking face. And if you say anything about an anime made before two thousand five and go, but this character was, I'm gonna reach across these pillows and slap you. <laughs> What I mean is that in the modern landscape of shitty, shitty isekai and bad fantasy anime, mm -hmm. the idea of having just this very serious, very focused, hyper-violent straight man who isn't, uh, I mean, I suppose could be, you know, like he's the blank slate for you to be like, yeah, I like being that badass, but how he's so completely disjointedly out of step with the rest of his bullshit fantasy universe to the point where he's the only one being CG animated... Yeah, oh my god. Mmm. Yeah, no, I fucking... I've bitched about CGI in anime a lot. I hate it. I hate it a lot. It never fucking looks good in anime. And it pisses me off because people will sit there and try to excuse, like, well, this is just what anime looks like. It's just like... No, I was watching anime, like, 20 years ago and it didn't fucking look like this, just saying. Uh, but... <sighs> The CGI thing bugs me a lot because when I think of, like, a scene that I love that has CGI in it, I think of The Great Mouse Detective, a film from the fucking 80s. And you have that bitchin'-ass clock tower scene where all the gears are fucking CGI. Mm -hmm. And it's seamlessly integrated into cell animation, and it looks amazing. And who made that movie? Disney. And how much money did they have to do it? It was the Great Mouse Detective, and it was pre-Little Mermaid, so <laughs> probably not as much as people would like to think. Yeah, but probably, what, two, three, four times as much as... But the thing is, though, like, we've streamlined so much, it's, and, like, anime already looks so clean and polished, mm -hmm. and, like, just, like, like CGI should, should integrate better now than it did with cell animation in the 80s. The fact that we, like, CGI was so limited back then. Mm -hmm. And, like, the fact that it was being integrated with cell animation, I think, okay, we have now hit over 30 years past that. Mm -hmm. And we can, we still have characters that look jarring as fuck well, in Well, yeah, because they're characters, not gears. It's, it's a totally different application. On a totally different work schedule with totally different yeah, systems. Yeah, no, 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 and it just, it should never happen. It should not that, happen. That's a whole different idea. Yeah. Okay. I, if you can't do it, don't do it, is, is my thing. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're gonna do a thing and it looks like dog shit, don't do the thing that looks like dog shit. See, I have no problem with his CGI in the series. You people have broken him. The modern anime industry has broken him. Like, seriously... We go from you defending Solo as an okay movie. No, I did not say it was an okay movie. <laughs> I said that over and over again, you piece of shit. Okay, serviceable? No, I acceptable. Said worth watching. Didn't say it was good. I didn't say it was good either. I didn't say that you said it was good. I said it was like okay, serviceable. No, nah, it's a bad movie. Okay. So something can be bad and still worth watching, but not hilariously bad. Like, so bad it's good. Yeah. Like... I... I don't understand the part of the spectrum that you are on! Okay. So, going back to Goblin Slayer, which mm -hmm. is the thing we're talking about... Um... Yeah, no. I haven't been watching modern anime, like, like the, the, the broad landscape of modern anime. Because I look at it and I'm like, all these fantasy anime look exactly the same level of trash. Mm -hmm. Like, I look at it and go, that is a thing that I'm not going to like. To which everyone, whenever I say that about any fucking yeah. thing, oh, how can you judge something before even fucking watching it? I'm Every like, fucking season. Well, yeah. this anime is going to be great. No, no, it isn't. Because it never fucking is. Yeah, like it happens all the fucking time where I say, no, this is fucking garbage. How do you know it's garbage if you haven't seen it? It's like, 
Because I can just look at it. I, I have basic pattern recognition skills. Right? I can look at the directing within the shots. I can see, like, the weird use of CGI. I can hear about what the fucking synopsis is. The concept of it. It's like, I've seen and a know, Wolverine burrow before. Just because this is a different hole in the ground doesn't mean I have to stick my foot in it. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, like I could... So, a lot of these anime, I just do not get the fucking time of day to. Because I just go... I'm not going to like this. This is going to be bad. To which the chorus of the internet goes, You didn't fucking watch it, so you can't voice an opinion on it. And you see, like, and if you decide the anime is going to be bad going in, well, of course you're not going to like it. You know, I've heard that one. like, Because there's always like these two things. like If you go in assuming you're going to hate something, you're going to hate it. Uh, or if you go in with too high of expectations, of course you're going to be disappointed. Which is why I always go the, the flat cynical route for most things. Uh, but, like, I have been pleasantly surprised by a lot of things. Like, I didn't want to watch Log Horizon. Mm -hmm. Log Horizon blew my balls off. That shit was awesome. Um, another example of some shit that I thought was... Oh, shit, The Last Jedi. I did not give a flying fuck about actually... Wa I watched The Last Jedi when I did only because... Well, I don't want to be spoiled by it for it, and I know the internet's going to spoil it, and I'm going to see it eventually, so let me just go ahead and get it out of the way. And it ended up being, like, my favorite blockbuster of that fucking year. Like, I fucking love that movie. I don't care what anybody says I love that movie. You're not going to change my mind. But yeah. Uh, so, you know, going into a thing with, like, low expectations or going, yeah, no, that's not going to be my thing. I've been pleasantly surprised a lot by that. I've been wrong. So, like, you know, going in, it's like, okay, yeah, no, I know what this is going to be. Like, I don't, like, nothing I've heard so far has told me otherwise, but I'll go give it a shot. And it seems like the only reason people like this is because it's dark and edgy and fucked up and violent. And I don't have a problem with those things. Mm -hmm. I like Helsing Ultimate. I like Berserk 97. <clears throat> That was from 97, right? Oh, I don't remember the year. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the good Berserk. The yeah. only one that happened. Yeah. Uh, Fists of the North Star. I fucking love that shit. That's like stupid, misogynistic, and ultra-violent. Which, like... So I watched the first episode of this a few days ago. Yeah. Um, and I, I wanted to watch some more because after the first episode, I'm like, Oh man, is this, is this what we're doing? Because when I saw it, I, I was thinking back to the um, the Demon Soul uh, opening cinematic, where oh fuck, you did it! You took this played out, generic as shit, low level fantasy setting, and you you made it threatening again. I thought that's what this series like. That was going to be its hook, its gimmick. We're going to do that. N n no, no, we didn't. We didn't. We just did that for an episode, and we've got more blood in future episodes, and it's just. It's still the same bullshit, barely even thought out, lazy ass, terribly designed, shittily made fantasy anime. Okay, good. So you at least... So oh yeah, no. The show is bad. Okay, okay. We're at least on that same page because I wasn't I'm sure... I'm gonna finish I it. Because I love terrible fantasy anime. You bitched for how long about Dragon Ball Super? Yeah. Like, how many fucking videos do we do? Bring up the time stamp. That's how long. I'm just saying. I could find things in like at least every episode of Dragon Ball Super. There was at least one thing I liked in each episode. I could go, that was a cool thing. They did they they, they said a funny or they did a they had a cool Sakuga or okay, that so was a can, neat you idea. You can find cool things in Dragon Ball Super to like. But Dragon Ball Super isn't good. Correct. That. Yeah, but I would never want to... Like, like, I watched Dragon Ball Super mostly out of obligation to a franchise I don't actually owe anything to. Mm -hmm. Because I'm nostalgic, and nostalgia nostalgia breaks people. makes Just makes humanity worse, really. Mm. But yeah, no, I watched that purely out of nostalgia. Shit, I tried to drop it, and the entire internet was like... Come on, we need someone to pitch about Dragon Ball Super! And I'm like, I don't wanna! I don't wanna! And I did it. You did. 
And so did I, you bastard. Uh, so yeah, I just, but like, you know, you know, we, 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 we got to like share an experience with Dragon Ball Super and rip on this shitty show. Like, Goblin Slayer, you're just, I'm not watching more Goblin Slayer, so you're just gonna, you're gonna take that, that, that roller coaster ride through the fucking desert of boredom and just... Oh, yeah. For no, it's 13 terrible episodes. fantasy anime isn't boring for me. Because ev- every, every episode, there, there's a new surprise, a new, a new facet of, of just human self-degradation. Of someone going, like, like, making themselves vulnerable and putting themselves out there like this... This is what I'm into. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, that's inappropriate. Yeah, oh my god. So, like, episode one, the rape scene happens. Right. Which was nowhere near as um, visceral as I was... Because like, I thought, like, the way... I mean, it was tasteless. But it didn't really... I was just like, yep, this is the rape scene. Mm-hmm. Alright, that didn't really phase me. What did make me laugh my ass off, though, is... When Cleric pisses herself in the goblins, I'm like, uh oh, you triggered their fetish. <laughs> that was that was just fucking hilarious to me, which I don't think was the intended effect. No, it's not Queen Blade. <laughs> oh god damn it! So yeah, like it's just. It's so edgy and so tryhard. And you're basically just... Everyone in the fucking show is just like... Hey! Half-plate McGrimdark! Like, you're like all stoic and you're super badass, but all you're doing is fighting goblins. Isn't that kind of some pussy-ass shit? And he goes... Kills a goblin? Yep! <laughs> <laughs> That's how I roll! Somebody's just, gotta fucking do it! And, like, like honestly, he's why I want to watch... I want to see if or what they do with him. Like, as a character. If, if they give him some growth and development, and if it's any good or if it's really stupid, or if he just sticks to his fucking guns for this whole goddamn show. And they're like, no, you have to care about something else, or you have to let go of revenge. And he's like, no, goblins are bad. I'm going to kill them all. Why aren't you doing that? <laughs> I mean, he does make a good point. It's just, goddamn. The fact that he, like, never takes off his armor just feels... It feels like there's a joke there, but they're not making a joke. No, it's a reaction to his childhood trauma. He feels safe inside. Oh. Even though his helmet is really, really terribly designed for all of the holding a torch going through cave shit that he does. Right? Yeah, no, it's... Oh my god, episode two rolls around, and his ridiculously big titty sister has a whole bunch of nude scenes. Like, I love the fact that, like... We, we start off with her in bed naked, just uh-huh. waking up. It's like, okay, she sleeps in the nude. Fine, people do that. And I love just her character, her entire character is summed up in one shot where you get both full on exposed side boob and full on exposed frontal ass shot. It's like, yeah, you are the ass and titties character. That is. And I don't think. Except because it's modern fantasy anime, there's, there's never just one. Oh, no, no. Of course not. No, we we met Dragon's Crown a few scenes later. Oh yeah, no. Yeah, she was fucking bad. like <laughs> I don't think I'm having the right right reactions because like like I don't mind fan service. Mm-hmm. I watched 90s anime. That was like I watched I own Plastic Little, an anime that has a special feature called the Jiggle Counter. The Jiggle Counter is a special subtitle that pops up on the screen that keeps track of how many titty jiggles are in an episode. And, and not just like every time, because this, this is a special old school kind of thing, where the main movement of the shot will stop, and then the boobs will jiggle. Yeah, like like a like character will like, like kind of like, you know, turn her head and jiggle. And, yeah. It's like whenever, like, a video game puts breast physics up to, like, 11. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and it would keep track of that. And that was endearing and cute, and I enjoyed that. That was was a great little thing ADV did back in the day. So, yeah, I just, like, we we need to make it very clear. 
Dra Dragon Slayer. Wow. Um, no, Goblin Slayer isn't isn't bad because it's dark or edgy. Goblin Slayer isn't isn't bad because it's controversial. Goblin Slayer is just a bad show. Yes. Yeah. No. It's it's completely uninspired. It brings nothing new to the table. Everything that it does has been done in far better shows. Because, like, I just think of the... Like, the whole time I'm watching this, I'm like... I'd rather just be alternating episodes of Berserk and Record of Lotus War. And I'd be getting the exact same aesthetic with a far better story. <laughs> like, god damn. Like, seriously. If you have not watched those two shows, the original 90s Berserk anime and the Record of Lotus War uh, OVA... Check those out, and you can understand like where I'm like, yeah, no, this is good dark fantasy. And I think if you play them both at the same time, they might sync up. Like... I don't know, but I think I'm onto something here. Is, is this like, like like where you like listen to, what was it? Dark Side uh, of the Moon. Dark Side yeah, of the Moon. Yeah, just like that. Like, I'm thinking about how both those animes open the first couple episodes, and, and those might... I'll have to look into that. But yeah, just, oh my god, like, fucking, like, like the sister, though. Like, like the, the fan service in this show feels weird, because it feels like it's just really in-your-face and gratuitous, too strict. Like, because, like, when I think about fan service, mm -hmm. you know, it's usually a little bit classier, um, a little, it's, it's oddly both classier and, and more tasteless. Yeah, it's, because what, what it's become in modern anime is just... I don't know how to describe it. Cause it, like, it, it it's not as titillating. It, it's just more easy. Yeah, because like you know, like whenever I think of like the fan service that like we had in like much older anime, I think of like like the the, the spring or the the hot spring episode of uh, of Outlaw Star, where you just have full on Asia clan clan tits all up in your face, and the show note it's like here is your reward episode. You have you have seen the hotness of Ace of Clan Clan for like twenty four episodes. Has some cheesecake, and I, I think that's really what it is these days. Is that the scene is neither about, hey, look at this beautifully done shot where we've showcased this gorgeous character design, and or or it's 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 not about uh, like presenting a, uh, a, a a titillating scene or sequence. It's just there in the middle of the other scene because yeah. we had room for it in the shot. Or. Uh, you know, just it, it, it's not so overt, overt to even be funny. Like uh, High School of the Dead. High School of the Dead uses fan service, like to titillate like teenage boys, but also just to be so overt that it's mm -hmm. hilarious. It's part of the joke, which is why when they have the fan service episode, they just crank it up to fucking fifteen. <laughs> And then they're just like, look how fucking ridiculous, <laughs> like, you thought this was the fan service show? Here's the fan service episode, here's the fan service show! <laughs> this fan service train ain't got no fucking breaks! <laughs> and, but here, it's just, like, it's just there, and it's not titillating, it's not, well, and then, like, also it's oddly fucking restrained, where you have, like, traumatized rape victim girl... Where she's like laying on the ground and she has like her clothes are shredding, except for like one strap of cloth that's like covering over her nipple. It's like You're talking about the the caster, or the monk. Uh, there was the caster. I think the caster might have just had her nipple bitten off. No, no, no. There, like, there was I a strap. Like blood. No, no. It was a was strap a of yeah, it was a strap of cloth that came up because it was like yeah, and it was because she also had like straps of cloth like around her. But then she just had, like, very specifically, strategically placed on her gravity-defying tits. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Yeah, no, it's, it's so dumb. So bad. And then we get, like... After we get, like, tragic backstory and big titty little sister, who, oh my god... You know she's not his sister, right? What? The pink-haired girl with the big tits. What? Yeah, no. He had an older sister that died. She was just a girl in the village that knew him. She lives at the farm now, and he's been crashing there. Oh. I thought, like, Kmar Trisha Elric was his fucking mom. No. Well, maybe. But pink-haired girl still wasn't his sister. 
Huh. Huh. Well, okay then. This whole fucking time, I thought that was just the little sister. Because <laughs> they live together. Yeah, he's and, been crashing it. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no. I I'll fucking admit, I checked out a lot during this. I wasn't even like, it wasn't even like... Like, I was just scrolling through Twitter and shit while what? No. Like, I actually was staring at the screen. I just started blanking out during the episode because I just stopped giving a shit repeatedly. Because <laughs> I'm like, for fuck's sake, something happened that is interesting or unique or a character moment. For fuck's sake. <sighs> so yeah, I'm still going to call her little sister because that is the role she plays. Mm -hmm. Like, even if she wants to fuck... Goblin Slayer, she's still the little sister that wants to fuck Goblin Slayer as far as I'm concerned. Oh my god, we, we need to talk about the pre-made party that shows up in episode 3. Because <laughs> the dwarf is fine. Uh -huh. He's fine. Um, oh, the elf. Yeah, oh my god. Okay, I'm going to say right now. Being someone who has kind of avoided a lot of modern anime... Because I'm old and curmudgeonly. Uh, I see this character design and my knee-jerk reaction is like, Oh my god, that's Deedlet from Record of Lotus War. Just filtered straight through Sword Art Online. To which he's just like, well yeah, <laughs> modern fantasy anime. And I'm like, we're just out of ideas. <laughs> Her design is... It, it's modern fantasy anime. It's way over busy with nothing interesting going on there. She's a terrible character. She offhandedly mentions at some point that she's 2,000 years, years old. old. Stop fucking saying your elves are thousands of years old if it's not going to be a part of their fucking character. It's just dumb and it's goddamn annoying and it's part of the reason I just fucking hate elves. I'm yeah. 2,000 years old, but I'm 15 and a bitch. Well, yeah... Oh god, yeah, no, I fucking, I fucking hate her. I'm trying to think of like, like, because I think like what like Deedlet in uh um in Lotus War was also really old, wasn't mm -hmm. she? But like, I feel like it wasn't like egregious. It wasn't like 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 she didn't say it smugly. It was matter of factly. Yeah, she she was really old, but also. She acted really weird and aloof and fey. <laughs> yeah, and she was also, like, legitimately wise beyond, like, her physical years. Yeah, like, she was... Fuck. She was the knowledgeable one. She was... Like, 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 her being that old made sense for her looking like a young character, but being, like, the, the responsible older figurehead of the party. Ugh. And also the lizard was probably really racist. Because they dressed him up like a fucking Cherokee, and he kept talking about his ancestors and shit. Yeah, no, like, like we, he is like the like 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 I, I just imagine that that's not what his people look like, and he just is like part of the village people from his content, <laughs> from his tribe. He just like 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 he's just that guy who hangs out at the lizard gay bar, and they're like, oh, thank God that queer left. He's off adventuring. <laughs> off to go find himself. Uh. Oh my god. Yeah. And they're like, here, we're looking for... And they're sitting there. Well, it's like the Orc... Orcborg? Orcborg. Or, uh, Orcborg. And the Beard Cutter. Which is just how they're saying Goblin Slayer. And that didn't make sense to me. Because it's not like, oh, he has the title, the Goblin Slayer. Motherfucker only refers to himself. Like, when people ask him his name, he says, I'm Goblin Slayer. Or he goes, Goblin Slayer. Like, that's it. That is just his fucking name. Yeah, people call him the Goblin Slayer. Yeah, but like, like it's not like he has al alternate titles. Well, it's just how it gets translated. That bugs me. Yeah, the beard cutter one is weird. Yeah, I just... I, I, I don't get, like, you know... Because it's not like those races don't have the words goblin and slayer in their lexicon. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to think of... I'm trying to think of, like, 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 like an equivalent that I'm drawing a blank, but it just, it just seems really, really weird mm -hmm. that, like, 
they're literally just giving him a different name because of like what he would be known in in their like language. Well, but it's, that's just, like it's a just a common his... fancy trope. Like you got a famous guy, like the elves know me as Fian Yellick, and the dwarves know me uh. as Zodin and Hukstenges. But I feel like those characters also always have like a real name on top of that that they normally go by, and just the legend spreads of them and shit. We're like, they're gonna, this guy doesn't have a name. He doesn't have a face. He doesn't have a character. He's just Goblin Slayer. Like, that's literally just what he calls himself. Mm -hmm. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if that guy, like, legally had his name changed to Goblin Slayer. If, like, like his license says Goblin Slayer. I'd be surprised if there was, like, a municipal system advanced enough for him to do that. <sighs> True. It's like, I've legally changed my name to Goblin Slayer. Through what, it's like, through what means did you do that? Pull sword out? Oh, okay, gotcha. Please state your name, occupation, and the episode you appear in. Uh, Goblin Slayer, Slayer. Goblin, Goblin Slayer. Slayer. And, uh, Goblin oh, Slayer. Uh. God damn. You guys had one fucking chance to get him to watch a modern anime. And you picked... The... You picked this. There were some other ones. Uh, Rosa recommended, uh, Zombieland uh, Saga. Oh, well, fuck yeah. Yeah. Um, that one actually looks pretty dope mm -hmm. from just like the three screen caps I've said. It looks like it has an aesthetic and a style. Like it doesn't just look like generic garbage. Cause that's the thing, like every part of this anime, like not just like, oh, like the story is generic, the characters generic, but like the animation is so lifeless. Like just the characters have like that same stiff, awkward positioning. It's, it's a lot of the shit that I would see in the worst episodes of Dragon Ball Super. And I'm just like, ugh, ugh, goddammit. Learn how to position a character and how the human body works, goddammit. So yeah, just really bad shot composition. Just really odd static shots of everything. Ugh. Like, the, 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 a lot of the animation is just character looking horrified while you see repeated animation of goblins stabbing someone. Mm -hmm. And while the, like, the close-up on the terrified face is shaking and there's a fucking filter on it. That's your animation for this episode, folks. Like, I thought, like, the whole, like, oh, we're in the age of digital animation. And, like, animation is cheaper and easier to produce. So now, you know. So it's going to get better. You worked for a corporation. No, it means we're going to make ten times as much. Like, it pisses me off. When I see people saying like, oh, we need to remake this old ass anime so it can be modernized. I, like, I'm going to say right now, there, I have yet this, there's not a single episode of Mobile Suit Gundam that I think looks worse than anything I saw in these three episodes of fucking Goblin Slayer. Okay, but tell me this. Mm -hmm. Look deep in your heart and tell me that you wouldn't want to see a high-budget reanimation of Mobile Suit Gundam done by Trigger. You didn't say Trigger. You're a bitch. I did. <laughs> you, you, you <laughs> just, just reached into my heart of hearts and just, ugh. Honestly, that would be a very different anime. Yes, it would. That would be like, like you know, what was it? The the, the, the guy who directed G Gundam, who was supposed to direct Escaflone. Like, if he had actually gotten to direct Escaflone. Oh, yeah. Man. Fucking uh, Zybok Empire. Just tequila Gundams left and right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I just, it, it bugs the shit out of me that this is, like, like, Constantly hearing people bitch about how unwatchable older anime is, and then seeing this is what modern anime looks like. It's just like this is what this is what's considered popular and acceptable, and people will just fucking watch it. Mm -hmm. And it bugs the shit out of me that this is considered acceptable. That early Dragon Ball Super was considered acceptable. I mean, to, to be fair, like I said, th this is what this genre looks like these days. Like every season, there's one or two like actually really good shows that come out. Mm -hmm. This is just a huge glut of nonsense that I happen to be really into. Yeah, it's just... Because it's not even like I'm against, you know, poorly animated, low-budget shit. Because, you know, Mobile Suit Gundam looks bad by today's standards when you compare it to, like, the good shit that comes out. Mm -hmm. 
but like it had artistry to it. It had a style to it. Rose of Versailles is fucking gorgeous and it's from 1979. And it has low frame rates. It has stilted animations. But god damn it, it had an artistic flair and a passion behind it mm -hmm. that these shows, that like a lot of these shows just do not fucking have. We want to talk about animation shortcuts. Let's talk about fucking Berserk. Right? Wait, which one? The only one that happened. Oh, right. There was just that one. And it was good. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Like, like that show is like... 60% panning shots. Yeah, it's just like big watercolors you slowly pan over with sound. Yeah, it, it's atmospheric and gorgeous, and it just... The people behind that gave a shit. And it's just, when I think of that, and then I look at this shit, and I'm like, you... I get it, animation costs money, but like, put some fucking talent behind it. Put some people who give a fuck behind it. God damn. Like, like a lot of my favorite shows have a lot of shortcuts to them. Utena is a show, but it takes a lot of shortcuts. And it's fucking gorgeous. Like I said, Mobile Suit Gundam, the original 1979 series, takes a lot of shortcuts because it was made in 1979. But just the mechanical designs, the, just, the directing is so goddamn good. It elevates the product. It just bugs the shit at me when I see people. Like, there are people who want Yu Yu Hakusho remade. Because, like, oh, we can remake it like the 2011 uh, Hunter Hunter. 2011 Hunter Hunter can suck Yu Yu Hakusho's dick. Because I'm gonna, I'm, like, yeah, Hunter Hunter's like, a like, great... like, on the whole, absolutely, for the animation. Yeah, no, like, the anim like, like, fucking Yu Yu Hakusho was dripping with style. Like, those Shimbo episodes are nuts and balls to the wall. And it's not even like only the Shimbo episodes fucking look great. The show is, like, once you get past them, trying to adapt the manga's art style for, like, the first few arcs. Mm -hmm. And they realized, this doesn't animate well. And they just said, fuck the manga designs, and just started doing their own thing, uh, aesthetically. That animates fucking great. Ah, oh, Like, the fact that people want that shit remade, just, I, I don't get it. It's just, like, it's not going to inherently look better, because, look, now it's digi-paint. <laughs> oh, now we can add, like, particle effects to the spirit gun. Like, if you want to know what 90s anime looks like just converted to digi-paint, go look up Gokudo. Give that a watch. I'm trying to think of, like... Shit, uh, I would recommend uh, Mohoromatic Season 2. Oh. But only because it'll make him watch Mohoromatic Season 1. I like Season 2. It was still fine. Yeah. It just, like, you know, and for being that early... I just hated the little blonde girl. Oh, yeah, no, she, she sucks. She was just the, 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 the tacked-on lolly that was just like, well, it's a new season, we need... Here's a lolly. <laughs> and this is our discussion of Goblin Slayer. Everything that's wrong with modern anime. <laughs> yeah, no, like... Join us next time for when we watch we... Zombie Land Please. Saga. Is that what it's called? I don't know, it's something. Yeah. We'll be able to find it. Yeah, no, it should be easy to fucking find. But yeah, uh, well, next week we'll do that one. Um... Uh, another one that was recommended was something about a slime. I think it's like that time I was turned into a slime. Oh, okay. So we'll go right back to the isekai trough. Oh, no. Is that an isekai? Uh-huh. Except this one has a gimmick. Don't they all? Yes. Okay. And uh, Gridman, which is the new Trigger series. Oh, yeah. Which I am going to forever just call it Superhuman Samurai because that's what I mean, that shit's an adapt adaptation yeah, why of. why wouldn't you? Uh, so yeah, I, I guess Zombieland Saga is the next thing we'll do, and we'll, oh God, I guess we'll check out the other ones that were recommended also. If you guys have recommendations from this season, if there's some hidden gem of this season that people aren't talking about, that you're like, wait, no, Zeon and Agro, here's a good one. Don't listen to these plebs. Recommend it. I'll, we'll, we'll give it a shot. I need good anime to not know that anime isn't actually dead and that I haven't been making the right choice for the last five years. <laughs>